Hello everyone. Okay, another book review. Learn Sanskrit in 30 Days. This is a great book. It's cheap and it's affordable. You can order this book online. Um, <clears throat> it's not like the best quality like a lot of books um, in India, but still, it's a really great book. Um, you know, I, yeah, like it's not a singular book that on its own can teach you everything in Sanskrit so I wouldn't agree like learn Sanskrit in 30 days there's no way you're gonna learn Sanskrit in 30 days so that's one of those like little gimmicks but um, it is a it is really a great book and the thing is that at least if you're like me a lot of the the Sanskrit you're learning is all online and so it's nice to just have like a tangible thing you know and so it's nice to have like a tangible book to to refer back to that's affordable and everything and so this book does that job well it also even shows you like how to write the vowels with like little like one two three you know what I mean like how, the order of how to how to write the, each of the consonants and vowels and then it goes through and it shows you like the uh, you know each way you can in, you know inflect like ka then there's ka like the long the short key then the long e then the u then the long u you know and so uh, this is great. It shows you all your vowels. It actually even has like a little mini dictionary in the end, but that's not that easy to use, to be honest. Um, at the end, what's very useful is this little section of like tastes. See that planet? See, it just has all the planets and their their names, you know, and de with, with the Devanagari characters. Um, and so if you're already studying Sanskrit through... Uh, one of those two main ones online uh, there's like learnsanskrit.org that's what I've used a lot and then there's um, I think there's like the American Sanskrit Institute is a very well known one those are much better you know if you're really gonna take it seriously but this is like a nice um, you know something that will complement your studies and it is kind of funny though at one point like towards the end it it gives you these tests like these test uh, sentences you know read it and then translate it and it doesn't even give you the answer though so that's kind of funny um, so you don't really even know if you're right but otherwise yeah this is great um, <clears throat> a great little book for teaching you like this is something very useful I thought some indeclinables that are used very often like tata means in that manner you know um, Avam, you know, Eva is like, like that's a, that's a really common one you'll hear like, um, Mahamrit Yinjan, Jaya Mantra is like, Urva Rukamiva Bandanam, like Ruka is a cucumber, Eva means like, so like the cucumber is ripped, you know, is severed from the creeper, that's part of that uh, mantra. <clears throat> you can learn these, these are good, like Cha means and, you know, just simple things like that. And then if you, yeah, if you start studying through one of those more advanced courses, you'll, you'll be like a lot more familiar if you do try that. Or basically anything you do where you get a little bit of more of a for, formal online learning or if you're lucky enough to have someone teach you in person, of course, it's great. But most, there's very few people speaking Sanskrit on the planet right now. Um, <clears throat> so ideally, take, if you're interested in Sanskrit, take, you know, the a more organized you know structured course but then this can be a great book just for learning a little bit of it and after having studied those uh, courses and lessons online I think I started in the summer of 2016 so it's been just a little over two and a half years I can read like shlokas and things you know like two or three line shlokas I can read and translate it myself and understand what it's meaning and that's really really cool because with Sanskrit there's like this quality of the words where they're they're connected to roots and you have to know those roots and there's mm, I'm not saying that it's ambiguous but there is um, there's just so many shades and layers to the meaning of a word that it really helps you um, and we have that same quality with American dialect and what we've done with the English language where we'll say you know do you get that do you get what I'm saying right now I'm not meaning are you literally getting a product from me I'm saying are you grasping it um, and so in the same way like like the word lub uh, would or lubba would um, be basically like a word that would mean you know like to 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 you know get to receive to to uh, to obtain um, so that can mean like 
you're getting something or you're uh, grasping a point, you know? <clears throat> so, and then also, uh, when it comes to Jyotish, like the, actually the syllable and the name, the, the syllable of your name actually is very important and it's really a clue um, right off the bat to like one of your strongest planets usually is ruled by the um, sound of your, the first syllable of your name. For example, my name is Corey and that's the K sound. Don't, you need to know like the phonetics of Sanskrit basically to know this technique. So that's why I'm saying it. It's like K, Corey, that's a Mars sound and Mars represents the gutturals. And, um, <clears throat> and I do have a very strong Mars in my chart. And uh, it's an Aries, you know, and it's awake and stuff like that. So this is a very neat little technique. And if you, yeah, if you learn a little bit about just the sounds and the syllables and just the very, very basics of Sanskrit, it can be a lot of fun. A lot more things in yoga culture will start coming together for you and making sense for you. And then if you end up going and studying the Shayanadi Avashtas, uh, the Shayanadi Avashtas do incorporate your that sound of the first sound of your name, you know, and they, they put that into the calculation for that. And so, you know, you'd also would have to know, have some Sanskrit familiarity to be able to grasp that, to be able to do your Shayanadi Avashtas correctly. And then if also, you know, like the previous video I made was about doing mantras, you know, to the planets and the the devas and all that and uh, truly I think like your intention and your heart is much more important than the pronunciation but you want to be able to pronounce it right as well so knowing a little bit about Sanskrit sounds and the pronunciations uh, will help you and then of course if you're an American like me you might still just not speak it perfectly all the time and that's okay um, but you can at least know this stuff and you know, have more of a familiarity. I think many of you will be able to appreciate it at some point, if not now. <clears throat>